Even if you disagree with everything I say in this video, this is the one thing that I know every Windows user can agree on. Okay. All right, that's there, and then, oh. Pretty good. Oh. All right. Hey everyone, this is Ergo Josh, and two weeks ago, I bought this MacBook Pro. And also in the last two weeks, I have not turned on my PC. So today I wanna to share with you the four main reasons that I made the switch to this very MacBook Pro here, along with some downsides, because let's be honest, as with all the stuff here on this desk, nothing is perfect. So make sure you watch to the end. Before we get into those details, there's two main reasons that I actually decided to purchase anything at all this year. And the first one was because of the incredible tech that was coming out this year, along with the incredible silicon shortage that made it impossible to get anything at a reasonable price. And the second reason was because I had a ton of issues, not only on my PC, but on my Razer Blade 17 laptop that I had when it came to video editing and even drawing. I was running around left and right trying to get Premiere Pro to work. I was running around trying to see where I could buy the new GPUs. So speaking of which, that actually brings me to the first reason, portability, because running around is something that you can actually do with ease when you have a MacBook instead of carrying this thing. So when it comes to portability, it's something that I never thought I would really care about since I do all of my work here in my studio, but it's really nice to be able to go to a different room with the same power that you have in your desktop and just work, work in the living room. I was actually at my parents' house this weekend because we were celebrating my mom's birthday, same same day as uh, Ross Draw's birthday, surprisingly. Um, happy birthday to him. But it was interesting how I could actually sit on the couch and edit. We had some other guests over and it was nice to be able to spend 100% of my time with my family because I don't get to go back there as often and I don't have to sequester myself in the basement I used to work in when I was getting my business up and running. I could just sit in the living room and chat with everyone and be editing in After Effects and the fans are whisper quiet. Honestly, I think portability for anyone is going to improve the workflow and it's just going to improve your content overall because you have that nice flexibility. It's super easy to move around. And if you have a long editing session, you want to get in some extra effects that you think your audience is going to enjoy a lot more. You can do that without feeling tied to the couch or tied, sorry, tied to your desk. And you can sit on the couch with your loved one and chill and relax that evening and make those little fine tune edits you need to really make your content stand out or whatever you use your laptop for. So the second reason is going to be reliability. This is a really big one for me because I found that it just works. That's something I've heard about, not with Bethesda, <laughs> but with Apple, their stuff just works. And I've experienced that with my iPhone as well. And as I am getting older, and as I realize I can connect a lot with a lot older people, things just working is important. I don't have as much time or as much cares in the world to be able to tinker with things anymore. I have a specific set of things I'm interested in and I want to devote as much time as I can to those things. And so when things don't work or things are a little bit difficult, it's really, really frustrating. And when it comes to how I work specifically for me, the ports on this thing are amazing. Now you've heard that already with so many different people reviewing it, but I just am happy with ports that work well. There's a few ports on here that just don't work. There's a ton of times where drives will just eject themselves on both of my Windows devices, whereas on my MacBook Air that I was testing before I even got this thing, I could back up my entire iPad with ease and no problems. Whereas on my PC, for some reason, every 35 minutes it would disconnect, so I had to wake up the screen every single time when I was trying to back it up so I could move to my new iPad. It was so frustrating. And as I'll talk about later, this MacBook is still not perfect, but even when it does crash, because it crashes just like with anything, it boots up really quickly and you're right back to where you started. The windows are right back to where they were, just like with my iPad, just like with my iPhone. Honestly, I remember the days when I had my first few Android phones and sometimes the only solution to get it to work was to open the back of the case and then smack that battery out until it would fall out and then you could wait a few seconds and put it back in to see if it would get back to working again. Now I know that's not with all Android devices today, but I'll never forget it. I'll never forget those when everyone with iPhones just had stuff that worked. And even if you disagree with everything I say in this video, this is the one thing that I know every Windows user can agree on. It is nice to not have those stupid forced Windows updates happen all the time and you come to your computer after it updated overnight and you lose all your work. 
The Mac does not do that. My phone does not do that. My iPad does not do that. When you set do not automatically update, it will not update for forever, basically. And so that is something I'm really, really, really looking forward to enjoying because unfortunately, when I got this new MacBook Pro, it came updated already. And that is one of the cons I'll talk about again later on in the video. And a really nice little thing about reliability here is the fact that this thing has a built in battery in it. And even though, you know, it's great, the M1 chips have great battery life, it's just nice to be able to be safe when a power outage happened because that happened honestly right before I filmed this video power just flicked on and off like it does all the time here it's super annoying but I don't have to worry about this thing happening whereas for this you have to buy a few hundred dollars purchase if you get something like this with this uh 2080 Ti in there to be able to get a UPS that can sustain this thing's draw when the power comes in and out now, the third reason is going to be speed. This thing is way faster than this PC right here. And I'll give you the specs on here as well. It's a few years older, but it's it's honestly ridiculous because this is a huge, like look at the cooler on my CPU here and look at how small this thing, I mean, look, look at it. It's tiny, right? And this thing destroys it in the Geekbench scores for both the single core and multi-core performance. The only thing my MacBook lacks in is GPU power. And yeah, I'm going to be honest, this 2080 Ti is nearly double the performance, but this thing is honestly good enough for what I'm using it for so far. Honestly, it's crazy. Like this thing can multitask like a beast without breaking a sweat. I could barely hear the fans when I'm streaming while I'm working in After Effects. I was doing that recently and it was really laggy, but hey, it was working. My stream didn't drop frames and I was recording the screen at the same time. All worked without a hitch. Nothing canceled on me. It's just perfect. It's really, really nice. Not to mention, if you're an artist, when you're working with a Mac and you want to record your screen, the built in screen recorder is so good and so efficient. It's so easy to edit on a Mac. It's just that alone makes it really, really worth looking at. And then you get to the internal SSD where a lot of the price is for this thing, because I spec'd out for the four terabyte model and it is amazingly fast. Like transfers, when I transfer this footage that I'm recording right now to the internal SSD is gonna be super quick. The cords, the cables are not gonna disconnect while I do it. It's just amazingly fast. And to speed things up even more, once I start editing, I have specific ProRes and H.264 encoders and decoders in this thing. And all that can sound crazy if you don't do any video editing, but it just means that when I edit and I, I'm trying to move to find the perfect second to clip out when I said something awkwardly and fix my, <laughs> just the weird way that I talk. I tried to make a mistake there, but I'm just too good right now, I guess. And I can find it quickly and it scrubs and I can hear myself and it doesn't lag and I can hit play and it plays and it just works. And it's just, man, if you do any video editing, you know that that is a dream to have. I don't care about render times at all. I care about how quickly can I edit and chop up footage so that I don't have to have a headache. And now we're getting to the fourth reason that I'm switching to my MacBook Pro, and that is flexibility. These these names are kind of similar to my last video about my studio tour. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen it already. It's, it's pretty nice. I've changed a few things here with my MacBook Pro. Um, I'll show some of that to you during this footage, but it's a pretty good video. This MacBook Pro has four or sorry, three Thunderbolt 4 ports on it. And if you don't know what Thunderbolt is, it's basically one of the best ports you can have on a device where it supports a ton of bandwidth flowing through. You can connect anything to it basically, and it's just going to work. Like my Cintiq over here, my 32 inch Cintiq, when I plug it in there, it just works. No other cables necessary. When I plug in a dock, it just works. Nothing else necessary. It's awesome to have that. And it's super cool to be able to use the two docks that I have and then set it on my desk. and I have have even more ports than the I think there's about 10 ports I have on this thing and some of them don't work I have the same amount here and they all work really well and then the coolest thing about this is that this can actually support four 4k monitors at 60 fps which is fantastic and actually do a little bit more than that and that's about the same that this desktop can do but my razor blade laptop can't do that it can only do about two screens I use three screens and when I plug in my Cintiq Pro, it's again, it just it just works so well. A really cool feature too that complements that and pretty much adds an extra screen is that you can just take your iPad and just airplay it to it or you can use Sidecar and Sidecar has a really low latency now so you can actually use like Photoshop on it and it works well and use it as a separate monitor, which is really cool. I honestly plan to start using that for calls right here instead of having to bring my MacBook over just the two feet I need to from my dock to be able to use it here for calls. And one of the best parts about this is again, I use docks with this thing. So when I have to change things around, if I wanna stream from this camera and I need to use my Elgato cam link to be able to plug it in and send the camera to 
uh, the camera footage to my Streamlabs OBS software. I can do that easily because the docs are easily accessible. Getting behind this thing, walking behind my desk where there's such tight tolerance space in front of you guys over there, it's super frustrating and all that stuff begins to wear on you day after day, hour after hour in the studio. And with this, you can just pick it up, plug it in. Like I can just pick this up, you know, take out the power clip right there and then put it somewhere else and not have to worry about anything. I can plug in all of my cables. Honestly, when I move this thing from here to my room, I unplug the power cable, I unplug the cable to my speakers and I unplug two. I'm just using two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So that's four cables that I know I can have them tucked away there, unplug them, move it and it's good to go. And another thing I forgot about reliability, and if you're a Windows user, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now, is when I tell it to eject an external drive, it actually ejects the drive and doesn't just tell me, sorry, we're not gonna do it. That's what all of my PCs do. They're just like, try again, sorry, it's not gonna work. And I'm just, when you have to do that, like look at look at all of the storage that I have that I use to film stuff. Like it, it drives me crazy when that doesn't happen. But on Mac, it's just like, oh, you want it to go away? Oh, we're gonna make sure it's safer. You're gonna eject the drive real nice here and you can see it and it's gonna be in a timely manner and we're gonna give you a sound notification too. So it's all all good, all perfect. That's just, uh, it's really nice. And of course, this is gonna be, you know, something that is gonna be unique to those of you who also use an iPad to draw. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, having a Mac is just so great. You can back up stuff, you can update things way faster, move your music around. And if you do art, you can send all of your documents all between your devices super easily. I can paint something on my iPad, move it to my Mac to paint in Photoshop, edit it back on my iPad super quickly, send it to my phone so that I can post it really easily all with just Bluetooth and it's just super, super nice and easy. Huge files too, like I'm talking big Photoshop documents. They just work so well. And the best thing about this is that later on, once Mac OS Monterey has the universal control feature, you can use it literally as a separate monitor and almost a separate computer where you can just drag and drop files. I actually saw in some Apple advertising, somebody dragged a layer from Procreate into Photoshop. Like that is gonna be huge once we can do that. I, I hope that feature stays, but I'll show you the footage. It looks amazing and I can't wait for that to be available here on my MacBook Pro. So before I get into the downsides, I wanna be honest again, the price. This is a big thing that you do need to consider when you're looking into buying any device like this. And this PC, this custom built PC right here, retailed for about 3,720. I calculated all of the components out to the price that they were at the time of purchasing. And this particular model of my MacBook Pro cost me about $4,900. So you might be like, what the hell? Obviously, that's not really a fair comparison, Josh. There's a thousand dollar difference between those devices. But one thing you do have to remember is that with the MacBook here, I actually made a list. You get a good microphone, you get a good webcam, you get a great trackpad, you get a good keyboard, great speakers, and a 4K mini LED screen with true HDR. And this doesn't have any of that. When you buy this, you can't just use it. It's just, yeah, you got a PC, now you got to buy all the other peripherals. But when you get a MacBook, or a laptop of any type really, it just works. It's, you got everything there. So I think that kind of evens out that price a little bit. And again, like I said, this is a $4,900 model. These start at $2,000, which is going to be really useful for a lot of people who don't necessarily do the content that I do, because even though I do do a lot of 2D art, I do a lot of 3D stuff as well, especially coming back from my architecture days. And I'm also interested in video editing. That's what I do is my job. So I do need a lot of the features that I purchased with this MacBook. And to go even further, the MacBook Air, like it's also really, really good for what it is. Like I could edit, I actually spent the past few weeks I edited the last several videos I made for this channel before I got my MacBook Pro on the MacBook Air because it was better and had less problems than both my desktop and laptop PCs. So yeah, this is expensive, but for a lot of people out there, you can get the lower end versions and it's still going to give you almost all, if not, or most, if not all of the advantages you get over something like this. So let's get into the downsides. The first major one is that you have to consider, I've been using Windows for 15 years now. I got my first PC when I was 10 and I've been using Mac OS for one year. So it has been pretty frustrating. There's a lot of little quirks I've had to learn and undo and settings I have to go into and do some research and see what other people have done to kind of get things to be how I wanted them to be. So if you're coming from a similar place, 
be prepared for that. Uh, it will take you some time to really feel like it's completely the same and even better an experience, but it's it's not going to take you too long. Trust me. The other downside is that a lot of third party hardware is unfortunately not supported. And yeah, like even my Razer Tartarus right here. Can I pull it? Can you guys see it? Yeah. I use this thing. It's so, so, so great for painting. I also use my Azeron sometimes. Well, now I don't need to as much because I kind of found a way to make this work. But I recommend if you want to use external keyboards and stuff like this, you get a program called Carabiner Elements, which is free. And I'm using that to be able to use my Razer Tartarus, but it only has one profile that I can use. So I can switch to other ones, but it's really manual. So I, I, it still works and I'm still able to paint at my same speed as before. And although I said you don't have to worry about those automatic updates ruining everything. You have to be worried about the big yearly updates like from Mac, o Mac OS 11 to 12 that we just went through right now. That kind of broke a lot of the features of the Wacom drivers that I have for my Cintiq Pro. So I have to wait for Wacom to update those. Whereas on Windows, you don't get updates that frequently that are that big of a deal that are going to give Wacom a problem with the drivers. So that's something you have to worry about or be stay aware of. It's not really that big a deal. Once you stay on one platform, you're going to be good to go. I recommend just do not update to the new 13 until it's way, way, way into development. There's like a 13.4 out there. And of course, gaming this is, is just completely useless. I would not ever get a MacBook. If you like to game seriously, if you want your computer to be the thing you do everything on, don't get a MacBook because you can't game on it, right? It's kind of made some improvements, but honestly, it's up to the developers and that's just going to take years to see if that ever happens. So just don't get it for gaming. And if you're a heavy 3D creator, if you're making a lot of content in 3D, this is still going to be something that you might want to go away from and focus on getting a razor blade or if you really want that form factor or just a beefier laptop or a desktop that has a lot more GPU power because you're going to benefit from it very quickly. But if you're doing basic things like me, like I'm studying Blender, I'm getting into After Effects and moving things around in 2D, in 3D there, it's plenty. Like I haven't had any problems with Blender while I'm using it. And Apple is actually working on getting Blender to work natively with its chips too. So it's this is definitely a category that might change in the future. So yeah, this thing is super expensive. I was a little bit apprehensive of my purchase when I started this, but honestly, I plan to keep this for at least five years, if not longer. And even if I don't, the resale value for Apple products is really, really great. Like I can sell this and it'll be super easy too, because people already know and have brand trust and awareness. You know, we're all these Apple sheep that just buy all the Apple products no matter what, right? So that at least I get my resale value back. <laughs> And as with all the videos that you've probably seen out there for all the MacBook Pros, I just want to say that this is definitely not an advertisement for them. This is not an ad. Again, the M1 chips are already really, really great for a lot of creators out there. If you don't make content and you just focus on art creation, I just encourage you to, to take a look at the uh, Mac ecosystem. It's worked for me. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think it's going to be a really cool relationship going forward. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave any questions below in the comments and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.